Hello everyone, my name is Avkash and are you interested in plotting some of your geospatial or geographic data to any mapping systems such as Plotly using Python? Or would you like to convert your geographical data to much more meaningful visualization which looks like these? You can convert your geographical data into this bubble map or you can take that data and you can convert that into the heat map. Heat maps are very powerful to show the concentration or the density of certain value in the geographical points or geographical location. Or you could convert your geographical or geospatial data into these hex points. Each hex points represent certain size of geographic data and the density or the color represent a certain value associated with that geographical data. So using Python and Plotly, you can create this beautiful map and convert your geographical data into a much meaningful information to your audience. Once again, my name is Avkash and today using Python, Pandas and Plotly library, we are going to render this beautiful map. You must need a geographical data in order to build this beautiful map. So let's get ourselves started. So I do have this Jupyter notebook open and we are using Pandas library to start with. Plotly library will be used at the very bottom when we are going to render these beautiful maps. Let's import the Pandas. That's our source location and I'm reading this file. This is very large file. It's about 700 meg compressed zzip and about 37 million records. So it takes some time to load that CSV from disk to the pandas memory so it can represent itself as a pandas data frame. And our data frame is available. Let's take a look. This data frame has about 37 million records so it means we have good amount of data to generate the density map and I will show you how you can aggregate all that data so you could build these maps or the data required for these beautiful maps or more information built into. Very first thing we are going to look into this data frame thus here is the D types it tells us that what kind of data we have. Here you see that the acquire date is a string format, it's not the pandas date format. And there are various other columns. Not everything is really needed for us. We need latitude, longitude, when this wildfire matrix was collected and what is the confidence value. Confidence value is between zero to 100. Higher value represents that's definitely a fire based on satellite instrument algorithm. Rest of these fields we are not going to use in this tutorial but you are feel free to work on it. Now we are converting the acquire date to the pandas data frame which has the date type. If I will look into D types again now our acquire date is date time. Now we are going to select these five columns and we are going to group by our data frame and the new data frame name will be daily df and it's going to use the confidence value. It will take some time to process these 37 million records and there is another library called Modin helps you to expedite your pandas code by taking your pandas code and distribute across all available CPU code. While pandas is single threaded, runs on single CPU, modern library helps you to run your pandas code faster. I have a one YouTube tutorial which talks about how to use modern library. It's just a one single line of code. Rather than importing pandas, you are importing modin.pandas at pd and all of your code will be as it is. Our new data frame daily df is ready and it has these fields which we have selected here and confidence value. 
latitude, longitude, acquired date, from which satellite and from which instrument. And that's data I'm not using in this tutorial. Now, because we have the acquire date column, which is actually the PANDAS date and time. So we are creating two new columns, year and month. They are extracted from our acquire date value. So this is acquire date. So let's add year and let's add month. So now we have our daily DF data frame. If we try to look into this data frame is about 37 million rows. We still have that many rows. Next, what we are trying to do is that if you look into the resolution of longitude and latitude, it's a six digit value. Each digit represent about 10. Uh, it, if there is no decimal digit, it means that resolution is about 110 kilometers. And if you reduce these resolutions, they goes like 110 to 11, then 1.1 and then 0.1 in that range. So we are going to set up our precision to single decimal digit. It means one row is going to represent the 11 square, 11 kilometer of the geographical data or a point. So precision is one and we are not using some of these fields. So we are filtering them and setting up the precision. So longitude latitude, we are setting up the precision here. So single digit, then we are setting up these year and month value. Then we are grouping by these total fires where we are grouping by based on latitude, longitude, year and month and the size. So it gives you new column and then we are defining the new column where the count is going to be there. We are replacing that with the fire count. Then we are creating this yearly fire based on grouping by longitude, latitude and year and then the global fire count which is based on longitude and latitude and the sum of the values. So these two data frames are created yearly fire and global fire. So let's look into yearly fire. Here you can see the single precision longitude and latitude with year and the month and the fire count. For that particular data point, you are going to see the for that year and month, what is a fire count. Then if you look into the global fire, where you are looking into the total count and year value is aggregated here and some of these values are not right. So that's why you are you might be seeing some of these mishandled values. So here is our global fire. And if you look into this data about 1.75 million records. And here we have about 202,000 records. So global fire because that's total fire combined and total fire by year and month. Now, what we have done is that we wanted to go one more level and we wanted to remove the zero or single digit precision and come back to zero precision. And the reason why we are doing is that because we want to create the bubble graph. So bubble graph, we want to show that for every 110 kilometer, how many fires are happened in last 20 years because the data is about 21 year worth of data. So every 110 kilometer area, the bubble graph is going to tell at that point how many fires are created. So bubble size will represent the more and more fire, a smaller bubble will represent the less fire count. And then the density or the color density will also tell that that particular fire, that area has more and more fire. So we are creating a new data frame called the total fire 100. And reason is that it's about 110 kilometer resolution. So we are removing the precision. So there is no precision now, zero single digit is removed. And then we are grouping by latitude and longitude and we are summing the all fire count. So let's create the new data frame and it's a longitude latitude zero is the decimal is removed. So now this only a single this is decimal value. And now the total fire 100 has the longitude, latitude and fire count. So for a given 110 kilometer longitude, latitude point on earth has that many fire count. And then fire count is recorded based on uh, a number of records were collected on year and month basis. 
So now we have total fire 100 data frame has this value. So we are going to use that data frame to start the bubble graph and the heat map and the hex map is used based with global fire data and the yearly fire data. So I will be coming there. So now our data frame is ready. So we are going to import the Plotly Express, PX and Plotly Figure Factory, FF. You also need to have the Mapbox token. If you don't have Mapbox token, just visit mapbox.com, use your email address and you are going to get the token, which token you could use it. If this token is working while you are using this Jupyter Notebook, please enjoy, please use it. If this token is not working, means when you run this code, you will get invalid access token. You can replace this token with the correct token. Next, we are building the bubble map. Now I will show you the documentation. Here is the Plotly geographic library for maps. We are looking into this bubble map. We are also looking into this uh, hacks bin map and we are also looking into the density heat map. So these three maps we are looking into here. So first we are passing the data frame Then for longitude latitude, we are telling in the data frame where the longitude column is and where the latitude column is. Color, we are telling that try to create the color range based on fire count, lower and higher value. Higher value going to have the dense or the dark color versus lower value, lower color. Hover name, fire count, size of those bubble is based on fire count. And the projection is a natural or because this data we have is belongs to about six countries. It has United States, China, Australia, Papua New Guinea, so you are seeing here United States, including Hawaii, Australia, Papua New Guinea is also included. And I put these three different graphs just to show you that depending on information impact, which one is really gives you better impact to make your audience understood your information. So now we are using this global fire data set and latitude is a column name latitude, longitude, and then we are using color for fire count. Again, depending on which lab, which uh, method or which object in this library you are going to use, it's a very different way to define the columns. And like here you see, I have to define this way. Here I'm defining a different way. So let's build the hex pin map. And here global fire, every hex represent the 11 kilometer area. Map is being built. This map has some darker hex which shows that wildfire are rec reported there. These are the areas in China. These are the areas in United States. So this area, California, this area, you could see ring of fire. Uh, Alaska, not so much. Hawaii has some. One thing to remember, if you want to make these hexagon bigger and smaller, use this NX hexagon. 150 is this. If you put 50, you will get three times bigger hex map. And these hex maps are fixed. So they are just a fixed size stick on your map layer. Now we are using global fire, latitude and longitude columns. Z is a fire count and that's where the density is and map box style is, it's the main terrain. And the reason is that because that gives you a little more clarity about heat map because we want to see the background of our map is mostly the terrain. Here, Australia, yellow, as you could see here, more fire count, that count here in, in United States and versus the Asia China. So hopefully that should give you an idea that how these maps are created when we are using these three different libraries from Plotly. And this whole source code is available at this GitHub repo called Python projects in my GitHub account, ProdRamp, and the folder name is Plotly Geo Maps. And the reference for these three maps image is also available. And here is the Jupyter Notebook, which we have just used here. So that's all I have for you in this tutorial. Please share it. Please subscribe it. That's all for now. And I will be seeing you in my next tutorial. Until then, thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Please like it, share it and subscribe it.